Hello everyone. Um, welcome. My name is Declan Carolyn. I'm co-chair of ECR Community and I'm very pleased and delighted to welcome you to the first in what is our series of hashtag ECR Catman Network webinars. And we've created the Catman Network as a forum to develop category management knowledge and expertise throughout the world. And let me just begin by giving an introduction so I can bring you into where we are today, how we got to today's webinar, and set a little bit of context for the hour ahead. Easter Community wishes to form a global category management network. We think the time is right to do so, and we think the world has never been in such a stage or state where shoppers behind the, or across the world are behaving in a very similar fashion. Everybody attempting to exit the pandemic, and adjust to new lifestyles, and everybody dealing with inflation caused by many things, but recently increased by Russia's war in Ukraine. So we want to set up a global category management network with the following simple ob objectives, to develop and share category management knowledge and expertise, to track the latest relevant category management related hot topics and technologies, to focus on effective interaction and collaboration I think that's really important and I think creating a forum to do so would really help and to provide a forum for showcases, discussions, debate and learning. Let us talk about how we got to today's stage. In November 2020, ECR Community released a, this publication, a review of current practices and category management, which we called Category Management Yesterday, Today and Tomorrow. It was a 200 page review with 14 global case studies looking at best practices and effective category management, it was free to download at the ECR community website and was done so in over 80 countries and at this stage is over 2000 downloads from, from, the, um, from the website. The following year and last year, we complemented this publication by having five global webinars where the participants and those who, who submitted articles for the, for the uh, review were able to present their case studies uh, on a glo in global webinars. So you can see the pre presenters which we had here. And after the five webinars, we conducted a survey of those who attended them and got great feedback in terms of the content of the review and of the webinars, which gave us encouragement and I suppose a mandate to keep this momentum going of trying to provide a peer to peer forum for category managers across the world. So hence, we decided to form the category management network. We said we needed to form a steering group. And that steering group would be responsible for scheduling four webinars this year and you can see the dates of both the steering groups and the webinars on screen and at this steering group we wanted to attract the most senior people in category management across the world and we have put together a quite extensive list at this stage of retailers suppliers category management experts service providers and ECR national and community experts in category management. It's a very impressive and deep list of those people who have significant expertise, history and capability in category management. We think these are the leading thinkers in category management across the world. They certainly form quite a large group of those people, but we're not finished yet. We're very keen to have more retailers and suppliers to uh, uh, service providers and experts to join our group. So I'm sure at this stage you have received information on it from your local ECR um, initiatives, but please feel free to contact me or anybody else here if you wish to take part. This is an important group because at this group and at our steering group meetings, we intend to identify the most critical issues facing category managers in the world and to keep those issues relevant, topical, and to try and address and alleviate some of the challenges and barriers which are facing these people. So let's talk about today's webinar. It's on inflation. Inflation came up as the common, most serious barrier facing all retailers and manufacturers across the world today. And we want to look at the focus of impact, the focus on the impact and implications of inflation and highlight how category management and better collaboration can help address the current inflation situation. 
Fasten your seatbelts and prepare for liftoff. That's the message that econ economists around the world are giving us at the moment as more bad news arrives every day on the cost of living front. First it was household energy bills. Then as ripples from Russia's war in Ukraine began to make their way out of the global economy, it has become clear that from food to construction materials, price inflation is touching everything and it's likely to be here for longer than we previously thought. Outright shortages of goods and inputs are also becoming a distinct possibility as the war takes its toll on fertilizers, supplies, metals and grains. And as a direct result of higher prices, coupled with the impact on international trade, economists now believe that war and related inflation could weigh heavily on global economic growth this year. Is the dreaded recession word returning into our lexicon? How are shoppers behaving across the world and what are their actions likely to be? We are in a unique position as all shoppers in all markets throughout the entire planet are attempting to exit the pandemic, adjust to new lifestyles and deal with inflation. So here's what we've set up for our webinar for you today. Great, great if, if Brian and Luke can join me because Brian are going to talk First off today on what the hot topics facing category managers across the world are. We identified these hot topics in our first steering group meeting and we think it's really relevant. So Brian and Luke have compiled a short list together and will bring us through that. Good day, guys. Secondly, welcome to David Chanchow of Dunhumbi. And David is going to talk about the best shopper first strategies for inflationary times. So welcome, David. Thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Thirdly, please welcome Frank Bonamer and Philippe Supersac of Lactalis Group. And Frank and Philippe are going to give us a case study looking at collaborative ways that a manufacturer and a retailer can take to address the current inflation situation. Thanks for joining us, Frank and Philippe, today. And finally, from Brazil, we have Philippe, and Philippe will talk about how category management can help in practice to maximize results in a complex environment. Very pleased to welcome Philippe to us today. And we have two Philippes from Brazil and from France. So thank you for joining us all today everybody. This is our agenda. It's quite a unique one that we are focusing on, on a common subject in as countries as diverse as Brazil, France, Belgium and the US. Um, but as we get through today, I think we'll, we'll see what the common denominator is. And at the end of our presentations, we'll pro I'll, I'll ask you all to reappear back on stage where we can all just add a little bit of value and some context and a deeper dive into the subjects we've created. So let's kick off today and we're going to start with our first, oh, oh sorry, just before we go, we already scheduled our web and our second webinar on the ECR Catman Network and no surprise that our topic is going to focus on the impact and implications of omni-channel and e-commerce and that's scheduled for the 15th of June. We're working on the pres presenters at the moment but already confirmed to date are Amazon, Mars and Red Bull, and GFK looking at e-commerce across Europe. So already we've quite a very heavy hitting group of presenters that will complement today's presentation. Let's kick off for today. Um, great if, if we can ask Brian and Luke to take the stage. I'm gonna make you presenter, Brian, and very much looking forward to your presentation today, guys. Thank you, Declan. There we go, okay, great. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, again, uh, welcome to the continuation of the uh, the Catman uh, Network uh, program. Uh, we think we have a series of events for you this year that will be particularly exciting, and we hope extremely worthwhile for you to uh, to to listen to and to learn from. So this is the first of the series. Um, and uh, again, thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Uh, one of, the, as Declan said, one of the uh, one of the first things the steering committee did was to come up with what we all felt collectively are the hot topics that will drive the direction of category management work in the next couple of years. Okay, 
um, because we did this for two reasons. One, one obviously we want to we we wanted to share our collective points of view on what what are these what are these driving issues that are going to really uh, affect retailers and manufacturers, and also provide kind of the direction and the platform for how category management needs to continue to address these kinds of challenges. Okay. Uh, secondly, and very importantly, we we're, we're structuring the program of webinars around these hot topics. Uh, as you can see today, you know we're going to be focusing on inflation, which is one of these hot topics. Uh, next session, we're going to talk about omni-channel online category management. And then as we go through the year, we're going to be focusing on one or more of these topics in each of the webinars. And we're going to be bringing to you knowledgeable experts uh, who can share their points of view about how these particular topics relate to category management, where category management fits in and provides solutions and platforms for the, for the use of these particular uh, uh, areas of uh, interest. And so we've structured the program around these hot topics. So we hope that that'll be a very productive uh, uh, course for us to take and to, and to share with you, you know, over the next uh, the next few months. Okay. Uh, so firstly, as you can see, we identified five topics. Uh, how do I get? I want to get. Oh, I see. I see what I can do. Excuse me, guys. I'm just I'm just maximizing the screen here for a second. Uh, okay. So the uh, the, again, the five hot topics were clearly the the ongoing impact of COVID. Now we know that COVID hasn't certainly been, been entered its run, but we do know that its impact is continuing, and we we believe that category management continues to play a role in addressing these changes that COVID has caused in in consumers and shoppers. And uh, that clearly is going to be a hot topic that's not in the past, but it's going to continue to influence category management in the months and maybe years to come. Secondly, collaboration, and in particular, collaboration in the era of inflation. As Declan said, inflation is taking hold all over the world, and it's challenging how manufacturers and retailers collaborate. And we're certainly going to be talking about those kinds of topics in today's webinar. Omnichannel online category management is, is very, very important. Uh, new technologies and how they're coming to play in category management. And then lastly, organization. What do we have to do organizationally? Structure, training, skills to continue to have category management play a, a, a critical role. So let me just, Luke and I will just kind of unfold these um, for you. Declan, Declan. Why can't Declan? I'm not changing the slide, unfortunately. Uh, no problem. Just try clicking on the slide and then um, arrow okay. down. All right. Okay. Here we go. So, firstly, uh, COVID raised a number of very important uh, issues and implications for category management. For example, how has the pandemic changed consumer and shopper needs and expectations? What are the long term effects? On, on consumer and shopper behavior of COVID? And then how can category management capitalize on these changes? What role can it play to help retailers and manufacturers address these new and, new and very interesting and highly opportunistic changes that COVID has caused in, in the behavior and needs of consumers and shoppers? If you look at it, clearly it, COVID had significant changes on consumer and shopper values, expectations, and behavior. Some of these were short-term, Others, others will be and are being long-term in their impact. Category management, the basic principles of category management, we believe provided a sound approach for adapting to these new changes. Uh, the most obvious learning coming out of COVID, without a doubt, is the need for more effective collaboration. Retailers and manufacturers got caught uh, with old approaches to collaboration, which were severely challenged COVID swept across the world. Some of the impacts, I think we, we know most of these, but certainly COVID put more emphasis on value, more price sensitivity as people really needed, they were uncertain. There, were, there was cause for great concern and anxiety. People became more price sensitive. They focused on local shopping, fewer trips, bigger baskets, shopping closer to home. We all know about the shifting formats and channels in particular the tremendous rise in online shopping 
and uh, home delivery, uh, in-store pickup, th those kinds of things accelerated their, their development within our industry. More emphasis on uh, cooking at home, food at home. Uh, and then, of course, elevated interest in personal and social well-being. People became much more concerned about health and safety uh, and, and societal well-being. And these are, these are long-term effects, most of these. They, they, they're not going to go away when COVID ultimately disappears. If it ever does, they will continue to influence uh, shopping and, and, and behavior. So how does category management come to play? Well, frankly, like in any, in, in any situation, where there's a dramatic change in the environment in which retailers and manufacturers work, we have always said that category management provides a fundamental platform for getting back to basics. It forces us to think about the, the, the basics of our business. Uh, so when, when COVID was, when, co when you know, COVID, we basically had to do a number of things, which category management gave us the roadmap. We had to review our category definitions and our consumer decision tree. How were consumers making decisions with these new value drivers? How did that affect the definitions and the purchase, uh, the, the purchase processes of consumers? We had to rethink our category roles because some categories became a lot more important than they had been. Other categories became less important. Category management gave, gives us a very, very logical way to address that by revising our category roles. We had to put more emphasis on different KPIs. Than we, than we had in the past, perhaps. Out of stocks, inventory levels became much more critical than they had on scorecards prior to COVID. New strategies. We had to seriously think about adding different strategies into our categories. For example, health image, safety image, where in the category, what products, what brands can we use to, to execute these, these new strategies? And then, of course, tactically, you know, we, we needed to look at our assortments, look at our pricing, look at our promotion and really make the adjustments to accommodate these new category roles, these new category strategies. So the point I, I want to make here, uh, and the same with inflation, anytime we have a major uh, change in the environment that's, that affects consumers and shoppers, category management provides a very logical way to think about getting back to basics, not panicking about what we should or shouldn't do, but logically, going through the steps that the category management process would ask us to do and making the adjustments in a logical manner for, a right, for the right reason to accommodate that, uh, that, new, uh, that new circumstance. So that's the first topic. I'm gonna to hand over to Luke now, who's gonna talk about the next couple of topics that the group identified as being hot, hot uh, for category management. Luke? Yeah, thank you, Brian, and uh, welcome everybody to this uh, seminar, this webinar here. Um, you know, I, a, a big second chapter uh, that came up from the steering group was really collaboration and managing inflation. And, uh, you know, the key point uh, behind all that is not only COVID and the logistic problems, but now also the war in Ukraine that, you know, for example, in Europe uh, leads to big issues uh, in, in delivering uh, flour, uh, sunflower oil, and, and so on. And prices go up even 40%. And uh, so retailers really are facing a hard time. And when these things happen, Brian indicated already a number of basic things that you can do in category management. But at the same time, um, you know, when there's only a couple of horses in the race in the up market where brands play, right? It's important to understand who are these horses and what are their characteristics. And I'm talking consumer shopper segments. Um, these people have demand spaces in which they still want to spend money and which they want to participate in the F1 race. And then you want to come, you know, with a Ferrari or a Red Bull uh, or a Mercedes car and not with a second hand Volkswagen or, or Skoda or Fiat. And so what will make that people want to spend more money? Because in inflation, you have to protect your value. You have to increase your value. So building the category vision is a key point to deliver more value in inflationary times. The role of private label and promotion is changing in this climate. But of course, when we're looking in, in previous sessions to how do we segment the market in terms of where the value is, where consumer shopper segments are in the below 100 spending indexes 
you know, for sure, private label and promotion will will play a larger role. And like this, as usual, there is not as much competition as one would expect between a brand and a private label. It's all a question of playing the right value drivers. And uh, then that leaves us to, you know, how do we bring that to life when we work collaboration? Yes. And working collaboration means more than just making a, a quick business plan. And what I'm going to talk a little bit in the next slides is also what are the pillars of a good collaboration and, and what does a manufacturer need to do? Uh, as I recently heard, you know, from retailers, you know, manufacturers do not understand who we have as a customer in our stores and how they can help us do that. So what can we do with that? I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, another key question is what are the barriers to better retailers? Uh, to better retailer and manufacturer collaboration. And I think I just called it out. I mean, it's understanding each other's perspective. And that starts with the consumption universe and the reason why people have shopping missions and go to retailers and how the category has a role there and what your brand can do to help create value. And that is in that collaborative model, not sufficiently worked out by the brand side of the manufacturers. That's a key point where uh, retailers really invest in understanding deeper the consumer and the shopper uh, and, and we're talking loyalty card analytics we're talking streaming data from the online retailers we see a, a big lagging behind of the manufacturers that will even sharpen make bigger the gap for collaboration you know when a range is defined by a, a retailer it's often you know done through algorithms when we're talking the bigger retailer chains well, how can you interact with that? that? That is one of the things where, you know, uh, manufacturers get frustrated about. They can deliver a planogram, but they cannot argue whether the product should be in the, the shelf, yes or not, and how it happens. How, should, how can we overcome that barrier? How can we work range optimization by understanding better how we include market? Brian, can you do the next slide, please? As I was saying, you know, we're, we're, we're facing, you know, COVID is, is nearly behind us. <laughs> maybe it's not really behind us, it will come back, but because we all vaccinated now, maybe it will be not that bad as it was over the past two years. But in Europe, at least, we're, we're seeing, you know, disruption in the supply chain. And in, in the COVID time, we had logistics disruption. Now we're having production disruption. I mean, a supplier, told me recently, you know, from, uh, uh, he said, you know, uh, when, when I'm making uh, mayonnaise in Belgium, for example, you know, the, the bottle company asks me to pay the increased gas price to produce the glass. Yes. Uh, the delivery of sunflower oil, uh, we're, we're not sure it's going to happen. And we're not even sure the seeds are put in the ground over there in Ukraine. So maybe this crisis will take up to three years before it's solved. So inflation is there for longer and these price increases will be more than just 2%. And the way it happens in the past that you announce it 12 weeks ahead to the retailer and there's a big battle and uh, it's de delisted and so on. Well, um, today, you know, these uh, suppliers just say, you know, to a retailer, you know, you have to accept the price or I'm going to deliver it somewhere else because I have not the, all the product I need to have. Uh, Brian, next slide. So wh when we're dealing with that situation, obviously the first thing we do is firefighting. You know, it's making sure we get the product. Uh, but then the question is, you know, if we have a, a product at a higher cost, how do we bring it to market? And, and then we have to go to the basics of strategy. And, and that is the basis for collaboration also. And there are four buckets that I really want to put into gear for all of you. They are super important, yes? The first one is understand the key stakeholder segments and their value drivers. Who will buy your brands? And what is the differentiating value they are offering in the market? It's time you understand this, yes? Not only consumer work from the brand, also, the consumer shopper segment differentiators. And if you want to be in the upmarket with your brand, you have to understand, first of all, what 
are these segments looking for? Yeah, that's the first thing. The second thing is, what are these people's demand spaces in which they are eager to spend money in inflationary times? Because there is money there and they are more choiceful in where they spend it uh, to, to create and keep the balance in their good life. So like the stakeholders, understand the demand spaces, the user occasions in these demand spaces for your brands and how you play that. The third bucket is where are they going for shopping? And, and Brian already said it. I mean, they, they're shifting to different channels. The online becomes more important. The on the go, more cooking at home for some. Others eat at work and, and so on. The insights of the consumer shopper journey and understanding where they shop are critical to understand where it is, with which retailers you're going to focus during times of shortage where you're going to be on the shelf to, to protect the value that you create for the most important stakeholders. Understand where they are shopping, why they are shopping there, and through a collaborative, more strategic plan on three pillars, stakeholders, demand spaces, shopping mission, and the channel in which they go, these are the key holders for ensuring that you keep your value in the marketplace. And the fourth block is, you know, the brand has to face this new generation, these new uh, value drivers. What is the brand innovation you're going to play in the next future for your category vision in order to ensure your future growth of the category? Four buckets to work. They exist in your company. Talk about it before you go to customers and before you make decisions. They make a hell of a difference whether you will create the growth that you are after. Uh, and, and make your choices strategically at this time where it is necessary. Don't do just firefighting. Right, next slide, yes. In this slide, you see that it's all about creating value. <clears throat> and creating value is not selling products or fixing a problem. It's more towards where is the aspiration of the consumer to, what is the experience, the demand space she or he is after, and sell solutions, yes. The category vision is about where is the value, the stakeholders, the demand spaces. And people who are above the average spending index in the market for brands are more upmarket, although some of them in some categories go on private label and retail brands. So understanding the differentiation element elements in how you can win with your brand is key connected with understanding those segments in the upmarket there. And again, it is not necessarily a fight between retail brands and brands from manufacturers. It's understanding the role that you have in that demand space and how you click into higher consumption universes. It's not just the user occasion. It's the meal. It's the experience at home or out of home that plays the role that is the basis for repetitive purchase and participation in an experience in which your brand plays a role. Brian, next one. Beside the demand spaces, we're talking the role of the category. Because if you want to work in a collaboration, you know, what, what is your brand meaning for the retailer? The retailer is fighting to win the shopping mission. Yeah. Consumer shopper segments, they want to have a consumption space, they have a demand space, they want to have a basket to fill this need at home for these filling out these demand spaces to have the experience at home out of home and therefore they go out and, and shop and either they do it for the day for one day two three days a week or a bulk shopping a planned shopping trip or even some other trips uh, online or whatever we can find and in the basic category management we're talking about the destination categories routine seasonal convenience in the middle of this you look at the content of a basket to fulfill those needs. These are linked with the segments that makes that shopping trip. And these are connected with their value drivers as a consumer and as a shopper. So a destination category, for example, cheese, and I think Frank is gonna tell more about this, in an important shopping trip at a supermarket that really looks into a high level experience 
of eating a cheese meal or cooking with, with cheese or eating at the end of a meal a good dessert with cheese and a glass of wine, well, I mean, clearly that's destination, probably top three, two, three, four categories in Europe, uh, could be in any one of those kind of trips. Well, what does the consumer want? What kind of brands does she want? What variants? How is the packaging look like? Is it eco? Is it how price elastic is it? What are the shopper <clears throat> drivers? What is the choice of the assortment? What are the purchase drivers, the, the, the uh, purchase decision tree? You know, th this is kind of the game that you have to understand as a second pillar for mm -hmm. collaboration. Stakeholders understand the mission and the role that your brand plays in there and what is the role of the category so that you can help the retailer win the mission. Next one, Brian. Luke, just to let you know, we're just up on time. So perhaps great if we could just go to the, the, the overall slides and we can circulate some of the uh, more in-depth information. Yes. yes. So next slide quickly, Brian. So very quickly through this one, the, you know, the, the collaboration is about the who, the why, and the where. It's to see which retailers is the where. And so I already talked about the who and the why. So the growth, uh, and then we can decide on the category uh, tactics. And I think Frank will go more in detail in examples. Next one, Brian. Collaboration. I mean, understand your customers, develop a growth vision, role of category, strategic alignment, as the German GS1 uh, category management book initiates key point and then a joint business plan. Next slide. How can category management best support range? I already mentioned retailers, they have their own algorithms, store by store based on their own data. Manufacturers have to bring in differentiation elements why they have to choose their SKUs and their range. And the category brand role in there has to be another uh, factor that comes into this. This is not enough done. It's a piece of work that starts. If you have strategic alignment, you can play a role in the range optimization. And that is really part of revenue growth management for retailer and manufacturer. Next one. So the opti-channel part is another big topic. Yes. Uh, and how do we how do we play that? And, and there's four buckets that I want to talk. Next slide, Brian. Typically, you, you have to understand where is my category playing, as already said, and which channels is the value being consumed of my category. A home, out of home, traditional, on the go, online, Q-commerce, restaurant, food bar, or just bought in the store. Yes, next slide, Brian. So there's four buckets that I want to talk. First, the incubators, which develop the new channel dynamic. People who go online, for example, it starts with you know, particular categories. Uh, and it starts with, with consumer shopper segments that are more innovative and ready to step into new channels than others. And they influence the others. Same of categories which are starting and then shadow off to other categories. In health and beauty care, it may start with uh, fragrances, then move to makeup, and then end with, for example, uh, hair care and colorants. Ooh. And now let's get into food also. The second bucket is how, how fast is the channel growing and what are the equity success factors? You know, the payment system, the logistics, what is important there? And understand who is winning in that market? What is the size, where to play to create my value? The shopping mission definitions, same as in normal category management. The differentiating consumer shopper experience. A key point in the online versus the offline category management is a big question. How do we do that differently? The difference is, Again, in understanding the mission across all the channels, and particularly then in the online, but the experience factors for the category assessment will be very different from offline versus online. It will be very different. A, a, a purchase experience in the journey online is different than in a store. These factors, you have to take them out, do the research separately on those, for uh, the market that is online. And that is the big difference in online category management. It's in the ass assessment of the experience factors on assortment, pricing and promotion, supply, planogram, and so on, the way you see it on the shelf, the way the interaction is happening. When we're talking new technologies, you know, and how efficient uh, uh, artificial intelligence is coming up, we're having new data sources and tools. Quickly, next chart, uh, Brian. 
So on data, I can quickly say, you know, it's important that we step away from the old single source, only this source to understand the market. We have to go to multi-source, to multi-channel, uh, multi-environment data like household panel, loyalty card data, uh, online streaming data. And, and by the way, uh, Amazon made $30 billion last year from selling media, but also sharing information on data streaming on target shoppers. Carrefour has invested in this heavily. Dunhambi does that all the time. And as a result of that, there are tools you know, that bring more virtuality, uh, category planning tools in which uh, the collaboration starts to be uh, in a different nature, different dimensions as, as talked in the earlier charts, interactive technology, digital asset databases becoming important and social media tools, apps to bring uh, artificial intelligence, intelligence uh, to life. Next slide. So when, when we're uh, talking the development of data and, and tools, you have to keep in mind one thing as a result of this little chapter. There are two dimensions. One dimension is held by the retailer. It's looking at how do I serve the shopper better through machine learning? What is he shopping today? The more I learn through the interaction from machine learning, the more I can focus and adapt my offer to personalize it from mass marketing based on segment knowledge and then to one-to-one -to -one over time. The second dimension, again, is underdeveloped. It's the manufacturer who has not sufficiently segmented the consumer and the shopper dimension in an integrated way through interaction, through research, and brought that to the attention to bring artificial into a level of enhanced artificial intelligence. Bring in that dimension, the category vision. Yes, that is a key point that we will talk about later in the coming webinars. Next one. Okay, let me just finish up with the fifth area, hot topic, uh, and that's uh, the organizational requirements. And, uh, you know, clearly, it, as we know, any business method or any business approach ultimately comes down to the people that use and apply that approach, okay? And we know that as we move forward in category management, give, given inflation, given COVID, uh, given new technologies, we know that to be a successful category manager, to have a successful category management function in your company, we need to look at new capabilities and new skills. We need to look at how do we recruit and train people to do this work? What are the, what are the main barriers that get in the way of organizations? What silos stop communication to be able to, in an integrated way, take advantage of consumer and shopper value changes? And then, and then very importantly, according to the steering committee, how do we how do we connect this into senior management? One of the challenges of category management has always been that it kind of gets viewed by senior management as kind of a more of a tactical set of tools. Well, we know that that's way understating category management's value. So, what do we have to do to really raise the uh, visibility of category management to that senior management level, to that senior strategy level? So as top management can get, relate to it and see it as a powerful tool for differentiation, for taking the value message uh, to customers and, and, and to shoppers. So, so one of the sessions that we're going to do later in the year, we're gonna focus on these organizational issues because there are tremendous changes happening in the world of work and how people get trained and recruited to do this work. And that, that applies to category management as well as any other job. So the steering committee, quite rightly identified the organization requirements are going to change. So one of the sessions later this year, we will be talking about and going much more in depth on what are these organizational requirements? What are these changes? Uh, and how can we adapt our category management organization to take maximum advantage of category management methodology and to take advantage of these new trends that continue to drive and shape our business? So Declan, they were the, the five areas. Uh, we're gonna structure our, our sharing with all you guys over the next uh, uh, six to nine months around these topics. And we look forward to doing that. Brian, Luke, thanks so much. Um, it's tremendously exciting, I think, the concept of a steering a group for the, this category management network, especially when we've such a high level uh, uh, um, uh, uh, amount of experts that are 
that are, that are discussing these hot topics. What was remarkable during our discussions, I'm sure you'll agree, is how common these hot topics were across in the regions across the world. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Brian and Luke. We, uh, we'll return. We'll return to these um, uh, these as we progress through the category management network. Delighted to welcome. Uh, building onto that. Um, our first presenter today, who's David Chanchow, who's Global Head of Grocery Retail with Dunhumby. And David is going to talk about best, the best shopper first strategies for inflationary times. Thanks for joining us, David. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Can you see my screen, by the way? Yes? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Terrific. Thank you. Um, my discussion, and thanks, everyone, for your, for your interest. Thank you, Brian, Luke, and Declan. This discussion will reflect on what retailers and consumer packaged goods suppliers should be thinking about and should be activating in this present time of what is certainly the highest inflationary rates in shoppers' lives. And for many of us, it's the highest in our own professional careers. We'll conclude in these few slides that these extraordinary times call for an exceptional understanding of and focus on shopper needs and buying habits and how those are undergoing even further changes post COVID as Luke suggested. But one thing is certain and a message I'll bring throughout this is that value for shoppers remains top of mind. I will also discuss why these extraordinary times call for a commitment in the back to the basics that Brian brought up built on shopper understanding and has been in the case in previous periods of economic challenge, it is category management that continues to provide brands and retailers with the framework, with the logical process to review, to adjust, to really make our go-to-market strategies right to meet these changing consumer and shopper needs and expectations. So again, this is about following a back to basics roadmap. I'll start with some suggestions on um, and some information about shoppers and then get right back to that roadmap. As I mentioned, these are extraordinary times. This is an exceptional understanding of shopper needs is absolutely required. Oops, and let me go back, sorry, to my other screen. There we go. That the percentage of inflationary price increases are, is already hovering at or above 5%. And this 5% is the historical tipping point around which shopper buying habits start to change. And that's change again, even given the changes in shopping behaviors already triggered by the pandemic. Shoppers are worried. Look, two thirds feel that their country's economy is weak. Nearly half see their own personal finances as challenged. Higher food prices are felt by everyone, but they're especially hard on poorer households that need to expend a larger share of their income just to keep themselves and their families fed. And this is the first reason why understanding shopper needs and behaviors is now more critical than ever. By the way, this comes from a survey that we call the Consumer Pulse Survey, conducted by, about, by amongst uh, 10,000 shoppers around the world just 30 days ago. In my 52 years in the industry, by the way, I see these times, this kind of, of uh, background as the worst hard times for brands and retailers. And moreover, economic pressures are building. 80% of shoppers in the survey, by the way, say that prices have gone up. 66% believe that prices have gone up a lot. They're a lot higher than this time last year. And perceptions of much weaker economy and worsening financial, personal financial, so I should say, show that the pressure is building. What I find really interesting is that things are bad in reality, but consumers think that they are very much worse. So they are overestimating their perceived inflation rate by nearly 11 points. So the evidence is really mounting that the next two years will be increasingly difficult for consumers and very different for retailers and brands as compared to the last two years. For example, in the last two years, costs and price increases could be passed maybe on to consumers 
and effects were buffered by stimulus checks by healthy bank accounts. But in 2022, stimulus support and checks are evaporating. Savings account support is very temporary. So once again, value remains top of mind. And from the earlier slide, the number of value seekers far outnumber more than twice the number of quality seekers. So I think Brian said this, buckle up, 2022 and 2023 will be very difficult and very different than the last two years in the industry. So many of the change shopper expectations and behaviors noticed during the pandemic continue to endure, as Brian said as well, including value as a determinant of store and product choice. There is an elevated importance of digital, referring both to the online and click and collect channel and the contactless store experiences. But within these changes, basic, basic shopping habits have likely changed and evolved. Consequently, what we thought we knew for certain about shoppers pre-COVID is probably no longer true. So I'm gonna look at five steps that CPGs and retailers should be taking right now with urgency, both internally within their businesses and in collaboration with each other. Some of these are builds on Luke's and Brian's opening comments. Number one, right now, you must refresh your shopper strategy and understanding. This is by using deep shopper data science that can come from loyalty cards, that can come from EPOS, but the science has really evolved. Um, and so this is an important time to reset, to examine shopping habits, like how frequency have changed, what loyalty looks like um, amongst your shopper segments, how changes in the number and spending by price sensitive customers and different affluence levels has changed. Changes in sales by format, banner, channel, and you decompose these as a function of changes in shopper behavior, again, as Luke suggested. And of course, not only that behavioral data, but, but also that perceptual, the attitudes, the needs, the mindsets, because this has been a very traumatic pandemic experience, and this will be a very traumatic inflationary experience, worse in our shoppers' lifetimes, remember. This also, once you understand shoppers better, you should also look at the strategy and ask yourselves, are we still focused on the right strategic group of shoppers? Where have the shifts been? Should we elevate any of our commitments? And those could be the retailer commitments, the customer promises on their language, or even your brand promises. Things like fair prices every day, does that need to change? Knowing that shoppers are seeking even greater value, and then how can we do this? One other note on this, we at Dunhumby conduct a, another bit of research on how consumers rate brands and experiences, retailers. We call it the Retailer Preference Index. It's about what drives choices of retailers. The one that we just finished shows that consumers are shifting back to pre-COVID needs, which were really, again, about value above all else. And value in this translation means an emphasis on shelf price. It is the top of mind for shoppers in the coming year. So that's one. Two is to focus on the right categories and products, according to shoppers. The supply shock that started in 2021, and then the resulting demand shock that followed as the global economy shut down, exposed vulnerabilities in the retail supply chains everywhere. And images of empty shelves and week-long queues for online deliveries put CPGs and retailers at the front of shoppers' minds, not in a good way, but as they recall pain points throughout the pandemic. These pains are continuing even today. My point is, is that we cannot focus on every category and every product. A retailer can't do that especially during a crisis. But fortunately, the shopper data science now can help identify categories and products that are most important to shoppers in terms of growth and loyalty. And this is a lens that can reveal opportunities for grocers to increase assortment flexibility or to lower inventory costs when faced with a shock. Now, we believe, I believe, that all of these shocks have created an urgent call to action for retailers to revisit their product strategies. 
the pandemic has certainly changed the old paradigm, absolutely. The paradigm that offering consumers more choice is not always better. Of course, these new curated or optimized assortment models could have a material effect on consumer packaged goods. Number three, ensure competitiveness on the right items. You must protect your value perception. I mentioned here key value items. Those are the small set of products that have a very large impact on value or price perception. A retailer should have its most competitive prices on KVI products in balance with a smaller, also a small set of key competitive items. We call those KCIs and a large set of less competitively priced background products. In this way, they can earn good price perception and shopper loyalty without compromising profitable growth. But uncompetitive prices on KVIs will drive shoppers to switch to another store or to another brand, particularly during inflationary times, whereas competitive prices on KVIs can create a halo effect where shoppers add more items to their basket to make subsequent visits to a retailer or brand. And shoppers can only recall a handful of product prices, by the way. KVIs are the ones that they're most likely to remember. They're also called in various businesses, known value items, items that matter most, the A list, you know, those kind of things or front basket. But right now is the time to review those because there is a shift Luke mentioned it, the trend more toward cooking at home. This makes basic cooking and baking ingredients more important to value and price perception. So it's time to think about deeper investing on KVI pricing for price sensitive shoppers and vulnerable shoppers during this recovery and inflationary time period. One more note, you'll see the notes on the left, online prices, must reflect in store prices on KVIs. They cannot be more expensive. They have to be there. Um, so in the interest of time, I'll keep clicking through. The fourth recommended step um, is to rebalance how prices and promotions work together to deliver value. Now, most retailers did execute fewer promotions during the pandemic because of the supply chain issues or a combination of factors like retraction of funding from CPGs, some did it to simplify operations and redistribute store labor. Others did it because they didn't really need deal marketing or promotions to drive sales. But shoppers need to find value in both base pricing and promotions. And now more than ever, value for money, remember, has become the heightened driver of behavior as consumers will face this inflationary economy. Shoppers do expect some level of promotions as their faith in the store supply chain is regained. But here's the caution and the recommendations on this slide. Retailers and brands simply cannot reboot their old pre-pandemic promotional strategy in this current transitional inflationary economy. Pre-pandemic, by the way, the percentage of retailer sales on promotion hit an all-time high. It ranged between 30 and 50% of sales across the sector, and that's according to our data but ever increasing promotional dependence is not sustainable against growing discounter, modern convenience formats. It's not sustainable against the other new disruptors that emerged during the pandemic, like delivery intermediaries. So getting this price versus promotion formula right is even more critical post pandemic. And you gotta throw out the old continuous slash and dash cycle, which might seem attractive, <clears throat> but it comes with a long-term cost to loyalty, to productivity, toward efficiencies, and you know that these are old arguments. Finally, base prices, KVIs, promotions are critical and important, but they are not the sole drivers of shopper value perception. Personalized offers and rewards, availability and quality of private brands, the type of sort assortment and the range, signage and marketing communications, and the store environment itself all influence the perception of how much total value a retailer offers. All these factors become increasingly important during these times of inflation. So the recommendation here is help shoppers on the experiential elements 
of the value equation, like making it easier to find smarter or cheaper alternatives. That's a great contributor to improving a retailer's overall value chain. Sometimes it's just logical flow on the shelf. Sometimes it's highlighting cheaper substitutes on the app. There's a lot of ways to do this, but here's the idea. Re-examine holistic value perception drivers. Make sure they're smart, targeted, and precise. Those are the short term. Here's some longer term ones I'll just take just a second on. An organization that really thinks about putting shoppers at the center of their thinking believes that escalating costs arising from the COVID-19 pandemic should not automatically result in higher prices to shoppers. Instead, retailers and brands should consider changes to their business practices to find new sources of revenue or save on costs of doing business so that they're not solely shifting the burden on the shoppers via price increases. This is kind of important. So there's some five areas here. Uh, uh, in the interest of time, I won't go too deep, but Luke has talked a lot about collaboration. Helpful service trade-offs on the bottom is department opening hours and, and those kind of things and services being guided by data. Simplifying and reducing cost to serve is about uh, range optimization. Um, and new reward and, and uh, subscription models around these things like delivery savers, uh, Amazon Prime and others, which also help customers save. It's about being surgical. These next two slides are very detailed recommendations on within the category management framework. So I take this back to a summary and put it back into the back to basics framework. And thanks here to Dr. Brian Harris for suggesting uh, a number of these actions. Yeah, we collaborated on this. Category management is the right framework. It is the right process to adjust all these strategies and tactics to make sure we're meeting these changes in these most difficult of times. And following all these principles laid out with these type of actions will be very important. I would like to hope again, in the interest of time, maybe do some uh, screenshots of this and I'll certainly make this part of the presentation available as a PDF file. But, and these were talked about by both Brian and Luke. It's looking at everything, how the category is defined, how the roles have shifted because they have shifted and will continue to shift during inflation. Um, what the performance evaluations look like, even what the scorecarding looks like. And I broke down the eight steps into two slides. So here's the next one. Oops. It's around uh, liberating working capital within strategies. There's a new role for private brands. There's other value levers. There's a mix of strategies that's shifting. Please take some time to go through this, understand this and go back to the basics of category management. This rapidly changing business environment and assumptions will require really urgent adaptations. And if you're ever going to be good at category management, it should be right now. If you're ever going to be good at shopper understanding, it better be right now. That's my message to you, friends. My last slide, building again on Luke's and calling for collaboration in a different form. There are winners during inflationary times. There are winners during unquestionably hard times in the industry. And those winners, I think, will have these three qualities. They will collaborate around the impacts of inflation. It's asking this question, look, we weren't making enough product progress probably on collaboration ahead of COVID. So let's use this as a springboard to really drive a, a different kind of growth. They'll win by focusing on shopper centricity number two by better meeting the needs that all of us have talked about. That requires a change in collaborative mindset. And three, they'll win using big data. Um, both, all parts, all members and partners within this industry. The understanding of, the use of, the democratization of big data is another one of the collaborative benefits. I'll list an image on the right and how I talk to retailers about the difference between what what is really just cooperation and that's what they're practicing more now and what collaboration will have to look like in the future about the vulnerability about the transparency all exposed by these problems all exposed by the shopper data um so th so that's it for me thanks very much for listening um and i'm excited to hear these next several presentations about how to bring this to life
So, David, thank you. Thank you so much, David. You've really laid it out in terms of there's no textbook or reference book available for the scenario we are entering. And it's quite remarkable that, that scenario is replicated in every economy throughout the world, in every region. Yeah. Um, here's a very difficult question, David, and I don't know if there's an answer. When will, there, will we reach the new normal? Because that new normal has to occur once post-pandemic lifestyles are bedded in, and once we once we depart inflationary times, are we talking two years more? We um, I'm presenting a, a discussion with Progressive Grocer Magazine tomorrow, and uh, the conclusion at the moment is that that at least through 2023, so at a minimum for the next 19 months. 20 months, we, we expect to feel increased inflationary pressures and we have our fingers crossed that we don't also experience recession. But, uh, but I think this is a, at a minimum a 2023 strategic imperative. Um, we'll just have then, to watch how the war plays out. Yeah, until then, buckle up and get back to value. Up. Understand your, your, your consumer and your shopper. Yeah, and get back David, to basics. Thanks a million. That was absolutely riveting. Um, and, and I like that you ended up your slide there by talking about um, a collaboration and how important, one of your last three points, how important collaboration between retailers and manufacturers are. Because we're going to have a look at that now in our next presentation, um, where we have uh, Frank Bonamer um from uh, uh lactalis group hello frank and philippe supersac his colleague from lactalis and both are um a category management directors in their various uh various segments of lactalis group um i'm very very interested and looking forward to hearing your presentation that follows on very nicely from what brian luke and david have discussed thank you guys thanks Declan. hi everybody you can hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm Frank Bonamo. I'm, uh, I'm driving the category management for the Lactalis group, and I will present you this case with Philippe Supersac, the directors of the category management of our French daily cheese subsidiary. Uh, in, Hi, few words, in few words, the group Lactalis, if you don't know it, it's a family group. We are a world leader on dairy, working on all the dairy categories. Uh, we have 85,000 collaborators spread all over the world. And if you don't know the name Lactalis, maybe you might know one of our 350 brands, uh, international brands such like President for cheese or cream, Galbani for cheese, Parmalat or Lactel for milk. Uh, I know that we have some Brazilian colleagues here Itambe is belonging also to uh, to to like Talis, the, the yogurt Stonyfield in the United States or the cheese Lerdamer in um, in Western Europe. So regarding inflation, this is the the topic of this uh, presentation. I won't go ahead regarding the different reason the impacting the um, the price and the causing the inflation, but. Here we will talk about France and just be aware that in France, this inflation was starting previously. We are quite lucky, let's say, because in addition to the worldwide context, in France, right before the pandemic, we were in a deflation situation and the government has decided to take some um, laws in order to avoid the deflation uh, first, also to protect the revenue of the farmers, so they have decided to a way to fix the consumer price and to make it higher. And on the other end, they have also decided to rule the promotion system, decreasing the uh, promo pressure and also uh, limiting the discount for the fast-moving consumer good promotion. So. In that uh, context, uh, we had the risk, and we uh, still live now the, this uh, situation, that our shopper changed their behaviors, going more to the private labels and also going more to retailers with a nice price image. 
So in that context, uh, the big question for us in Lactalis was, oh, we should be able to still create value on a category, having the right balance in between this inflation context and retailers without a price image, uh, e price image and brands, which cost a, a little more. And so we have started listing all the tactics that could be used in order to act uh, in front of inflation. Of course, you have some, let's say, usual uh, tactics, just like NPD, downsizing of the products. You can uh, do some channel management focusing on the price image retailers, or uh, it has been said before, range on product management to choose a, a better um, product priority list for your product. But we finally decided that what was important is to take all things being in call, and we finally found uh, three main tactics. The first one, maybe the, the, the simpler one, was to secure the volume using the promotion. Uh, the only thing after is um, uh, it's, it's right for the shoppers. On a manufacturer, on a retailer point of view, you have to be very careful with your PL. The second tactic was to create value around the product in order for us to uh, make the shopper more available to pay more our product. And we have seen two different um, phases. The first is to work on the shopper benefits with the retailers, with loyalty program, playing on subscription context, uh, or to provide uh, shoppers new services such as animation, advisors, testings, or on the other end, inside the point of sale, to work on the image of our category uh, with a, a seduction merchandising to make the uh, the shelf more sexy for the um, the shoppers, uh, so that they could accept to pay a higher price. To organize with the uh, the retailers some um, uh, special events or a promotion around point of difference that, uh, in, that are important for the shoppers, uh, CSR or ingredient or local product, also to develop impulsions. We know that impulsions, you are less uh, attached to, uh, fixed to a special price, it's more emotional. So that was important also to develop this impulsion via the cross merchandising. And the, the third tactic, uh, which is maybe more complicated to do, is to break the unique price perception. Uh, as an example, a, a box of one kilo pasta, uh, two euros, it's normal two euros, but it's a, a, a possibility, a solution for 10 dishes at 20 cents. Uh, so you, you can also break this uh, perception with a cost per person, a cost per dish, a cost per moment, a big plate of 20 euros of, of cheese is no more 20 euros, but it's something to share all together for five person at four euros. And the last thing, rapidly, if you are able to do so with your category, is to work on special area where the shopper is able to master his budget. This is the bulk area, this is the daily area. There, the shopper is able to choose the size of the portion he wants to buy. He, he can master his budget. This is also very important where you are in phases of uh, uh, inflation. So we, we will talk about you about a, a story inside this group in France, talking about the um, cheese category, where we have worked on the, let's say, traditional process of ECR, focusing on three main levers, merchandising, service, and promotion. And thanks to this work, we succeed in creating value in a context of inflation and price issue uh, with the retailers. Alors, we have decided to work on the cheese category because, for your information, in France, it's a huge category. It's nearly 9 billion euros. It's more than 9% of FMCG meaning that it's crucial for the retailers to play on this category. This is the first category in the basket huh, in France. Uh, nearly half of the basket at the cash counters, they have one cheese inside. Uh, there is a huge consumption and of course, 
it's part of the French culture. You can't live in France without eating a cheese. A cheese, you have to be aware that inside the point of sale, there's two places to sell cheese. The, the normal one, let's say the dairy, the food, it represents 85% of, um, of the sales. Everybody is going there, 100% uh, person penetration, and shoppers are going there for price and choice. On the other side, you've got the daily counters. It's only in two bracket 15%, but 15% in France, it represents more than 1 billion euro. And I can tell you that 1 billion for most of the countries, for cheese, it's already huge. And people are going there for quality and services. We have decided to focus on daily counters and to work on what Luc said previously, the, the why, the, the who, and the where. Regarding the why, rapidly, the, the, the positive points regarding the daily counters, Delhi is a real destination category, and we have been able to measure the impact when a store closes the daily counters, it will lose 17% of traffic on cheese, uh, meaning that people are going to specific store because of the daily counters. It's an uh, image provider, and it's a way also for the retailers to differentiate from the competitors. It brings value that are important in an inflation context. Pleasure, healthy, responsible. And what is also important for us as Lactalis with our brands is that the, the brands are a, have an effective role to play inside this uh, placement. Because a brand can bring a guarantee for quality, for origin, and also a testability, which is important for uh, the, the shoppers. On the contrary, we have some barriers, a low penetration for the daily cheese. Uh, if you check banner per banners, you can see that only 10 to 50 percent of the shoppers going to uh, to the shop to buy cheese, only 10 to 50 are going to the daily counters. And uh, this issue is due to the fact that there is a price perception which is linked to the inflation, which is negative. The people think that it will cost a lot. And the, uh, the last barrier, it's more for the retailer, is the management cost. When you create a daily uh, counters, you need people and it, it costs money. On the WHO um, cluster, let's say, we have decided to focus on two main groups. The first one is the gastronome in France. It's the gourmet, let's say. It's 20% of the population. This is people more than 50 years old. They have quite an interesting revenue and they have a, a, a big basket, which is quite interesting also for the retailers. And they are brand driven. On the other side, we have decided to work on the cooks. Uh, and this is young couple with children who like cheese uh, and who use cheese also to make some uh, dishes um, uh, for cooking. They have also a high basket because it's a family, but they are more private label driven. And right now with this uh, CSR trend, they are very focused on uh, responsibility and things like that. And on the where, I finish with that, the, uh, regarding the, the way to work on the French trade, we have decided to focus on big supermarkets because it was more relevant for big supermarkets to the daily cheese counter. And inside the big supermarkets, we have decided to tackle three banners, Marché U, which all together represent nearly one-fourth uh, one, one of the um, the, the French market, because Intermarché U are more focused on the gourmet. And we have decided also to work on Leclerc. Alors, Leclerc is the number one retailer in France, because Leclerc is uh, uh, as close link, let's say, with this cook. And I will let uh, Philippe tell you about this, uh, this category vision linked with the inflation context. Thank you, Frank. Um, to, to, to define our strategy and uh, our tactics, we need first develop and consolidate uh, our knowledge about the daily cheese category and uh, about the chopper. So, uh, 
uh, with a category management process uh, that allowed us to understand uh, the role of the category, uh, the purchase buyer and, and strikers, to define the best location, uh, the good organization uh, and segmentation, to, to know uh, shopper segmentation and, uh, and decision tree, and uh, how to, to, to work assessment and to define uh, pro our promotional strategy. So for that, uh, we work with various um, recognized companies uh, on, on data, on uh, uh, experienced shopper, and uh, we made a significant number of, uh, of shoppers interview uh, to uh, consolidate uh, all the data. So, uh, we defined uh, our strategy, uh, name it Destination Fromage, and uh, the objective is to develop traffic in a confirmed destination category uh, with uh, two uh, targets, uh, two priority targets uh, about. Uh, uh, sorry about uh, strengthening gourmet and attracting uh, the, the cost, uh, uh, a priority uh, target to develop this category. So, uh, which our target, three tactics, we define three tactics. The first one, how to create value on this category. Uh, to create value, uh, we build a new uh, daily uh, concept uh, to uh, to develop uh, a best shopping experience for the shopper. Um, for this, uh, we are working different aspects of uh, of uh, the category: the space management, the ergonomy, uh, the organization uh, to 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 know the shopper flow, uh, flow uh, to 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 work design. Uh, on, uh, on uh, a new a new concept. Also, we we work with a, a new uh, segmentation a segmentation by usage uh, to to develop uh, an organization with three shopper input keys. The first one, the most important, uh, the cheese plate, uh, and um, the second one, the local cheese, and uh, how to develop. Uh, a new uh, uh, a case uh, about the catering uh, cooking cheese on this category. The objective is to demonstrate the diversity uh, uh, of offer and usage and to f facilitate uh, the circulation of the shopper on the category. Always to create value, uh, we have been working on assortment optimization uh focus on uh, premiumness develop regional and local offer uh, uh, capital on the brains to reinsure and to give the, the shopper on the daily category and uh, uh, strengthen demand and uh, uh, on a fresh cut quality offer uh, about the, the the product also uh, uh, we make focus on services uh, brain services and, and, and advice, uh, and to develop expertise and knowledge of the team. For that, uh, we have developed a, a new solution, uh, a digital uh, solution. Uh, it's a B2B uh, digital platform with videos, tutos, articles, uh, and quiz to develop expertise and uh, knowledge about this category, uh, and to, to share the best practices. Uh, in summary, uh, how to, to know everything about the daily cheese category. Great value also by meeting uh, environment expectation with uh, less packaging and by using uh, recycled materials, uh, waiting especially uh, at the target of the cooks uh, about the uh, environment. And also develop input uh, with cross mechanizing like uh, with uh, jam or uh, wine, for example. 
The second tactics uh, it's to break unique price perception uh, by uh, first in to to communicate to communicate on budget mastering. Uh, um, the daily cheese is like the the cheese the bulk section. Uh, you can buy the right dose. Uh, so uh, uh, budget mastering by the right quantity, uh, proportion variability, and by advice on the good con quantity according to the use. For example, for uh, for snacking or for dinner, how uh, how many uh, cheese you need uh, for the different usage. Um, and break unique price perception also by offering more services uh, and particularly by developing a cheese catering offer and uh, ready to use solution, uh, so much uh, cheese on platters, uh, plate, uh, cheese plates uh, for the aperitif, uh, and dicey cheese for snacking, for example, and uh, offer to seduce uh, always the, 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 the cooked targets. Last level to, to secure uh, the turnover, the volume, and to, to develop this category, uh, it's about the promotion solution. Uh, uh, we have developed a promotion solution with the objective it's to generate to generating volumes about uh, all the uh, recruiting the cooks generate positive assets uh, for the daily uh, counter and to break the barrier, the, the price barrier. Several case success factors for successful promotion. Uh, the first one to, to create a big events on the store uh, with material and post ad advertising. Uh, to, to, to have a, a good location in a traffic zone, uh, it's, it's essential. Uh, of consumer flow to capture consumer who, not, who wouldn't know have come naturally in this category. Uh, and of course, uh, offer attractive price and reduction to encourage uh, purchase and to develop uh, the volume. All while uh, maintaining, uh, it's important to maintain all daily value, uh, the choice, the quality and services on this category. Finally, uh, let's share some, some results. Uh, the first one about the daily concept. Uh, we support all retailers uh, on, the, on the advice and, on, and uh, about the development of the daily category. Uh, we realize 10 implement complete full concept uh, about the, the destination fromage uh, with a, a good result, uh, average uh, than 20% 20, 20 turnover more uh, with uh, the, the, this new solution. The second one about daily expertise and uh, our new uh, digital platform. Uh, we are in deployment uh, since uh, more one years and collaboration with several uh, retailers uh, about training uh, and develop expertise about the about the team uh, we are digital solution and the last one about the daily events uh, we we develop uh, this promotion it's uh, in more uh, uh, 7,000 uh, animated store uh, with also uh, a very good result, uh, more 60% of uh, incremental volume, uh, and uh, to develop uh, the, the, the basket with more seven, uh, five um, SKU uh, in uh, 75 case. Uh, with, uh, with this uh, promotion. So, unfortunately, the, the COVID situation uh, has not allowed used, uh, us to measure uh, the impact uh, in the, the two, two principal and priority targets, 
uh, but I think we, we can do that. Uh, I, uh, I also in uh, in uh, uh, three three or two months, uh, I think. Uh, so uh, thank you for your attention and thank you for your invitation. Thank you, everyone, and thank you, Declan. Frank, Philippe, um, that's a remarkable case study um, and, and extremely relevant in terms of understanding our customer collaboration and showing tactics that are applicable in the current, in current climate. Um, in the interest of time, let me move on to Philippe in Brazil for a final presentation and we'll just catch up afterwards. Um, perhaps I'll ask you to come back. Thanks so much, guys. Bye. Ciao. Thanks. Hello, Philippe. Hello, everyone. Thank you for presenting me, Declan. Let me share my presentation. So, um, Philippe, delighted you can join us today. Um, I understand that English isn't, isn't your most fluent language, but from going through rehearsal, I think it's absolutely more than adequate. Uh, and it's a really relevant presentation because I think in your marketplace, you've been dealing with inflation for a number of years now. Uh, and the expertise that you have in Brazil, I think is, is worthy to hear on a global scale. And I think we can all learn a little bit from it. So looking forward to your presentation, Philippe. I understand, I think it's for those, I know we're reaching time, but I think Philippe's presentation is about 10 minutes, so it shouldn't be too bad. Thanks, Philippe. Hey, thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Felipe. I'm in charge of category management and marketing strategies and pricey of Sud Brazil operation. Uh, we are the northwest region of Brazil. First, I want you to thank you for the opportunity to participate in such important events for everyone in retail and industry. Uh, a special thanks to Brian Harris, who is a global reference on the subject, and Fatima Merlin, our national guru. <laughs> it's indeed a great honor for me. <laughs> As we know, Catman is a strategic area, okay? Uh, however, Brazilian retail still explores little of the benefits and process brought by this area. In addition, Catman can contribute to the perception on varied as well as quality and cost X benefits at bricks and loin stores. In a scenario with relevant inflationary fluctuations, unstable public policy, high unemployment rates and discouragement with no prospect of replacement, the challenge of supply the food pantry becomes even harder. Therefore, the strategically unitage retail and industry keep on seeking alternatives that can meet the needs of shoppers. Furthermore, to avoid bringing such impact on family disbursement. Uh, according to Nielsen, oops. According to Nielsen, the rationalization of consumption has become even more real in everyday life due to improving the management of the, their expenses. About 35% of shoppers buy cheaper products of the same brand, and 31% look for cheaper brands. The shopper is more for changing prices and offers. About one quarter of shoppers inform they monitor product prices. Real life in Brazil. In others, 22% of shoppers claim that they go to farther regions so they are be able to pay more cheaply. Competitiveness and price perception have also been a, a prominent attribute for the shopper choice. Okay, as Brian Lucky well presented, Catma aims to provide a standardized and intelligent shopping experience, deliberate a universe of solutions to the shopper. But in the scenario we face, this work is boosted by some complementary initiatives, some actions that we are doing and great results, such as one, provide greater prominence of physical and virtual packs in the exposure of categories in their natural points, 
presenting the competitive advantages in planograms. Very important. Two, strengthening the private label, not only as a pillar of shopper loyalty, but as a strategic attribute of profitability for the business and for the shopper. In addition to allow access to good products at fair prices in the focus categories. Besides, for our private label, we guarantee a robust and prominent position in the planogram. Three, in commodities, uh, ensure the presence of OPP brands, first price products, is even more relevant for us regions as an alternative to, to the shopper to migrate brands without leaving the categories consumption. Moreover, during the basic as well, in that uh, also ensure the catman as a regular and cultural process in the company from end to end. Regardless of the situation, catman needs to remain the link in the differentiation of categories. We are much more successful when we incorporate catman into our team's routines. Commercial, considering the pillars of catman, supply, marketing, trade, operations, all without your exception. I refer to catman as integrate process. For example, we work on the coffee category experience together with strategic squads through a collaboration between retail and industry. Play in the video. In summary, the catman is an important contributor to the sustainability of the business, especially in scenarios as complex as ours, given that in the Northwest even more, penalize in macroeconomic data. Our issue is filtering the shopper at the center of decisions. As looked at us, most, uh, most of, of retailers in Brazil don't know their, their shoppers. Oh. Only four in 10 has customer de database. Without it, it is impossible to develop target actions. That's it. Thank you for the time. It's a pleasure. And you till next time. Felipe, thank you very much, um, and thanks for being brief at this juncture. Let me see if I can invite back on uh, Brian, Luke, uh, Frank, and Philippe um, uh, back on, uh, back onto stage if you if you are available, guys. Yeah, I'm available. Okay. Um, can you see us, hear us, Declan? Yep. Hi, Brian. I can certainly uh, hear you. Okay, good. Why? I'm not sure why you can't see me, but uh, oh, okay, here we go. Oh. So uh, thank you, everyone, for, for today. And I know David had had a hard club and, and just had to shoot off. Um, you'll see in stage one of the slides I started today off with and the objective of what our category management network is. Um, and I think we, we covered these areas in quite detail today, very successfully through really intimate and detailed presentations. Brian and Luke, just for some concluding comments, any, any observations which you had on presentations um, that you witnessed? Uh, well, Luke. go ahead, Brian. No, 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 you go ahead. You go. Okay. Well, first of all, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really impressed by, by the quality of, of our invited speakers, David and, and Frank and Philippe, the two Philips, actually. Uh, I, I must say, starting with the presentation of uh, Frank and, and Philippe, you know, really congratulations. You know, it's clear that you guys have developed a strategic approach in terms of the who, the why and the where and uh, uh, making a distinction up market versus those that look more to, into pricing, you know, the cook, the cookers, opposed to the gastronomic uh, lovers, and then see in which retailer to play uh, the role. But then fantastic, fantastic translation in category strategies and tactics. 
really, I mean, being that focused and knowing what you're going to do to help a retailer win in inflation and by offering differentiating solutions is really a great add-on. And I think uh, Filippi Texera, you know, uh, adds to that, that when you are educating the shopper in the store, it still adds a lot of value. And I, and I think Philippe Supersac, you know, finished the presentation by saying plus 20%, you know, and that proves that up, up market, there is value to be made with, with brands. And there is value to be made at the bottom side of the market with the cooks by doing work on the private label. So as I said, you know, there, there is work that can be done. But I want to assist also David, you know, he's unfortunately he's gone here, but he, he really insisted in understanding, you know, who is your who is your consumer shopper? Who is your client? Who is your stakeholder? How do you make your money? And I think Lactal has understood that, but they also understood which retailers own which consumer shoppers and played that differentiation and built differentiation from that. And that is a way to answer in inflation times and create value. I would be, I think this is, this is really a, a fantastic session in my view and great work from, you know, I know Frank to be a big, big expert and Philip, you really impressed me, you know, even a video within the presentation, uh, but, you know, this this is clearly, you know, I've been in Brazil many times. I was always impressed by the in-store luxury, you know, and uh, you guys, you know, you make it true. I think the add-on is the data. Working the data is is a, is a challenge for you guys to come. But I'm, you know, thank you very much for that work. I'm, I'm really impressed. Big, big thanks. This is really adding a lot of value. Brian? Yeah, thanks, Luke. You know, well, one of our missions is clearly off to a good start, right? We want to share different perspectives from different parts of the world with category management professionals from all over the world, right? So today we heard we, we heard uh, perspectives from both the retailer side, David focused on that, to the manufacturer side. Uh, I mean, and, and uh, Philippe from Brazil focused on that. And then we had Frank and uh, Philippe's presentation uh, on the manufacturer side. So, and we had presentations that reflected European situation opportunities, uh, situations in Brazil, as well as in North America. So I, I think, you know, hopefully you'll see that what we're trying to do here is provide a forum, a platform to share these kinds of fantastic stories and learning. So as people around the world, by hearing this, and listening and learning from it, they can accelerate and, and apply the, the logic of category management to this whole new world, particularly in the next couple of years, as David said, that's going to be driven heavily by inflation, product shortages, and so on. There's a couple of key words, I think, from today. Number one, value. Values, we, we have to recognize that inflation changes values. So we need to understand what are the changing values that consumers and shoppers have now brought into their decision-making. We need to be ahead of that curve. We can't wait for it to happen. We need to be thinking ahead of, how do we, how do we understand those, those value changes? How do, we, how do we react? How do we respond? How do we create solutions that are in tune with those value, uh, those value uh, changes? Secondly, the key word, collaboration. There's no question about it. COVID taught us how ineffective our current methods of collaboration are, both on the supply side as well as on the demand side. The, we, we need to, and you saw examples today already, collaboration beginning to be used more intelligently, more systematically. We need to review, revise, upgrade current methods. And this is going to be a major theme of, of, of the messages that we bring to you over the next year or so. Thirdly, category management back to basics. It forces us not to panic when inflation goes from 2% to 10% to 15%. Don't panic. We have, to, we have to think about it logically. Category management has always been that great method of thinking logically. Okay, what's being affected in those eight steps? How do I logically think about the eight steps and make the logical adjustments to that new situation. It forces us to go back to basics. We have a wonderful tool in category management 
to help us in these situations, okay? So there's no need to panic. We, we have a process that works, and we can, we're going to continue to unfold that and show you how to use it most effectively in the next, uh, over the, 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 the next few months and the next year in our work with the Capman Network. So again, great presentations, everybody. A very, like Luke, very impressed. You guys are true professionals. We really appreciate your willingness and commitment to share your knowledge with us. Much appreciated. And we're looking forward to uh, subsequent sessions. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Luke. Uh, on that basis, let me leave with the final slide and just to tee up our next Catman network, which is on June 15th. We're going to focus on the impact and implications of omnichannel and e-commerce, as, as mentioned earlier on, as one of the hot topics, not surprisingly raised by the steering group. Um, and you'll see we have some presenters confirmed to date and others to follow. Um, let me thank Philippe, Philippe in France, Philippe in Brazil, Frank, Luke, Brian and David for their time today um, and for everyone who joined in. Um, let's spread the news. This is a forum where we can learn together and share and develop our category management expertise uh, because as David pointed out, the world and shoppers around the world are behaving identically and will be in a state of flux at least until the end of 23. On that note, thanks for joining. Take care, everyone, and talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you, Declan. Fantastic. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a great day. And spread the word, guys. Spread the word, please. Salut, les gars.